My name is Megan Ankerson. I'm an assistant professor in communication studies and I study media information technologies and visual communication from historical, cultural, and industrial perspectives. And before I went back to school and pursued an academic career, I worked as a web designer and I taught interactive media production and I was very involved in digital art and electronic literature. And so that background in design and production and visual expression has really informed my research interests, which center on web history and digital visual culture. And so I'm interested in how perceptions of quality and value and taste and expertise have informed web design and production cultures over time. And, and I want to understand how power and culture and meaning are bound up in these practices and shape uh, dominant perceptions about how the web should or should not be made, how it should look, how it should sound or not sound, and, and who's best qualified to design it. I'm currently working on a book that examines the emergence of commercial web industries during the dot-com boom. And in this project, I'm looking at how web industries were reconfigured and reorganized alongside the economic context of the dot-com speculative bubble and the discourses of the new economy that were so prevalent at this time. And so I'm trying to draw out the connections and the tensions between expertise, skill, and perceptions of quality, and the shifting aesthetic sensibilities and visual style of websites um, during the web's first decade. It's a fun project. I have bought a, uh, a 1999 iMac that's running all of the software and operating system of that time so that I can play back the websites, uh, copies of websites, CD-ROMs and, and zip disks that I've accumulated and which no longer work on current systems. And so for me, this, this brings up, you know, what goes into studying old websites is, you know, these issues concerning digital preservation and web archiving what gets saved and how we define our digital cultural heritage? I think these are really interesting questions and really important ones too. In my teaching, I have classes that focus on visual literacy and visual representation, um, digital media, technology, and internet studies. I teach a class called Visual Culture and Visual Communication, where we develop critical strategies uh, to analyze, for analyzing a range of media from film, television, photography, graphic design, web, video games. I also teach an upper level seminar called Visuality and New Media and in that class we examine the changing ways that the user has been imagined in relationship to the screen from 1960s mainframe computer culture to today's mobile apps and uh, locative media environments. I think it's really important to bring a sense of historical context to the examination of contemporary media technologies and viewing practices and I hope that my students walk out of my class as more informed and more critical media users and technology users too. After all, we're surrounded by media and uh, uh, visual information in all aspects of our lives today, and I think that being able to make sense of it, cultivating visual literacy, is to me not just about learning how to um, use images to effectively communicate, but also about developing a critical vocabulary that can help us identify how images hail, persuade, communicate meaning to different audiences in different places and at different times. And so visual communication, it's important to a communication studies degree, but visual literacy I think is really key to being an informed citizen in today's world and it's something that I care a lot about.